Krishna, everyone. Welcome back again to our ongoing series in the glories of the 12 forests of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Happy to be with you. You can see we're back in our New Delhi recording studio. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Goravani Pacharine, Nivishesha Shunyavari Paschata Deshatarane. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So, over the last few weeks, we have been milking the pastimes, so to speak, of Radha and Krishna's um, leelas in Yava. Milking the pastimes. I think we can safely use that term, <laughs> milking the pastimes. As Srila Prabhupada himself quotes a verse in his introduction to Bhagavad Gita, from the uh, Gita Mahatmya, verse number six, with the same theme. Sarvopani shado gavo, dogda gopala nandana, parto vacha shudhir bhakta, dugdam gitam ritam mahat. Dugdam gitam ritam mahat. The translation is All the Upanishads are like milk giving cows. Lord Gopal Nanda is like the milkman. Partha Arjuna is like the calf that helps the milkman in extracting the milk. And the Bhagavad Gita is the nectarian milk. The Bhagavad Gita is the nectarian milk. So milking the pastime. <laughs> so today we have one last Yavat pastime to share with all of you. And here it is. <clears throat> it's a very nectarian pastime. We've been discussing for a couple of weeks now how Jatila, um, Radharani's mother-in-law, tries her best to stop Radha and Krishna's meetings. But as we've seen, she always fails. So one day she got like really frustrated. And she said to Srimati Radharani, Radha, I've had enough. It's all too much for me. You go to your room, and I'm going to lock the door and never let you out. So Shirada submissively went to her quarters, of course accompanied by her closest associates like um, Lalita and Vishaka. Now this all meant, ultimately, that Shirada was going to be a prisoner for life, never get to see Krishna. And it's described as such her feelings of separation from Krishna reached their greatest heights at that moment. Her feelings of separation from Krishna reached their greatest heights. And so she soon collapsed on the floor of her room. <clears throat> of course, this is all planned by Purnamasi Yogamaya, the pastime potency of the Lord. So immediately, Lalita Saki came running out of the room shouting, Jatila, Jatila, Radharani has been bitten by a black snake. She's unconscious on the ground. Help. Of course, it's all true because we know Sri Radha was actually bitten by the black snake of separation from Krishna. So Jatila panicked and she screamed famously, We have to get a snake doctor. A snake doctor. Of course, in the West, we don't have snake doctors. But here in India, I've seen such persons who can cure snake bites with mantra. Sometime in the 1970s, I was walking in, in our, around our Mayapur community near the Jalangi River, and there was a, a worker working in the fields there. And I, I came just after he'd been bitten by a cobra. He was foaming at the mouth and trembling and shaking. So I was thinking, you know, we have to get this person to a hospital, but the farmers, they said, oh, just shanti, shanti, <laughs> shanti, shanti. And they called a snake doctor, a person who, who has certain mantras that they chant in such a way as to bring out the poison from the person who's, who's been bitten. <clears throat> and I saw with my own eyes that the person who came, he chanted these mantras for maybe 20 or 30 minutes, and suddenly that person who had been bitten by the cobra, he vomited this black liquid out. 
vomited it. And then he sat down and he rested for another 20 or 30 minutes. And he got up and went back to work. I saw it with my own eyes. Snake doctor. So um, we have to get a snake doctor, Lita is saying. So Jutila, um, in, in her frenzy, she ran out of the palace to look for a snake doctor. And the first person she met was Mother Purnamasi. So she said to Purnamasi, please help me, help me. Radharani has been bitten by a black snake. She needs a doctor. So Purnamasi, you know, she displayed some compassion, and, but she smiled and she said, well, Jatila, by the Lord's arrangement, there's a young Brahmani girl visiting from the area of Mathura who just happens to know all the snake-curing mantras. Her name is Vidyavali. Vidyavali. So hearing this, Jatila became somewhat relieved. And she requested, Purnamasi, could you please take me to meet Vidyavali? So Purnamasi took Jatila to where uh, this Vidyavali was staying and introduced um, her to Vidyavali. But when Jatila looked at this Brahmani girl, she became a little suspicious and thought, this girl <laughs> somehow looks familiar. It's written that I was reading, Vidyavali was um, pleasantly dark-skinned. Her beautiful eyes extended almost to her ears. Sound familiar? Her nose and lips were extremely beautiful. Her teeth were set like rows of pearls. She had three lines on her neck. And to Jatila, the aroma of, aroma of her body was very familiar. But Jatila, in her haste, pushed all her suspicions, all her, her doubts aside, and said, Vidyavali, please come. They say my daughter has been bitten by a black snake. But Vidyavali, she answered, Jatila, I doubt I can come. I'm from a very high-class Brahmana family. I rarely go out in public, especially around here. I've heard that in this area there's a rascal cowherd boy who sometimes approaches young girls. I'm sorry, I don't think I can come with you. So Jatila was like desperate. She said, no, Vidyavali, please, you're our only hope. You are our only hope. Come, I will protect you. So Vidyavali, she relented. All right, all right, I'll come. And Jatila brought her to the Yavat Palace <clears throat> and straight into Radharani's room. Straight into the room. And as Vidyavali entered Sri Radha's room, Jatila observed um, some unusual symptoms in the body of Srimati Radharani that she only noticed when Krishna was around. <laughs> she only noticed these symptoms in Radharani's body when, when Krishna was around. Radharani's hairs were standing on end. Tears started flowing from her eyes like torrents of rain as she was trembling. So when Vidyavali noticed Jatila was getting a little suspicious, she said, Jatila, don't be fooled. The symptoms that Radharani is exhibiting are symptoms of advanced snake poisoning. <laughs> Advanced snake poisoning. I have to tell you, um, your daughter is very close to the end. I'm going to have to chant some very potent and very powerful mantras that may adversely affect others in the room. So I must request all of you, even you, Jatila, you please go outside while I do my work. So Jatila, she, you know, okay. <laughs> So Jatila announced to everyone in the room, all right now, everyone out, out, lock the door, let the snake doctor cure Radharani. But all the gopis were smiling, of course, and they, they left very quickly and waited outside for two hours, for two hours. So after some time, Jatila, you know, she became a little anxious and she <laughs> knocked on the door 
And she said, Vidyavali, it's Jatila. Um, it's been two hours. What's going on? So Vidyavali said from behind the door, Jatila, the mantras didn't work. Sri Radha's condition is so serious. So by my mystic powers, I had to call the snake that bit her to come and take the poison out. So now Jatila's like really worked up. And, and she, she calls out to the snake from behind the door. Oh, dear snake, please take the poison out from my dear daughter-in-law. She's my very life and soul. So then from behind the door, the snake, the snake replied to Jatila, I know when I hear this pastime from my dear godbrother, uh, Dina Bandha Babu, he, at this part he starts, you know, speaking like the snake, zzz, like hissing, zzz. I can't imitate him. Anyway, you can imagine. Uh, the snake replied, replied to Jatila, Jatila, I am the snake, trying my best, I am the snake of Lord Shiva. And actually, shh, I've come to kill you, Jatila. So Jatila was speechless. She said, me? You want to kill me? Why me? So the snake replied, because you are spreading so many false rumors that Radha and Krishna are meeting secretly all over Vrindavan and you are destroying the good reputation of your daughter-in-law. Thus you must die. So Jatila, Jatila pleaded, No, no, I will do anything. Please help me undo these terrible offenses I've made by spreading rumors about Radha and Krishna. So the snake said, <laughs> All right then. So you must never again spread such rumors. And you must go everywhere in Vrindavan now and declare, all the rumors I have started about my daughter-in-law are false. She is actually the most chaste girl in Braj. Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki. So the snake continued, if you do that, I will forgive you for your offenses and I will take the poison out of your daughter-in-law. So Jatila, yes, 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 she agreed, agreed immediately. So then a, a few minutes passed, and then the door opened. And Radharani came out looking very ecstatic and happy and effulgent, not like she'd been, you know, not like she was recovering from a snake bite. She came out very effulgent, blissful, happy. And then Vidyavali, the snake doctor, um, came out as well with a slight smile on her face. <laughs> so Jatila was very grateful to the, to the doctor. So she said to Radharani, Radharani, now give Vidyavali a big hug and thank her for everything she has done. But looking at the doctor, Radharani blushed because, you know, all her friends are there, everyone's watching. So Radharani blushed and she was a little hesitant. So Jatila said, Radharani, I am instructing you. Give the doctor a big hug. Show your appreciation. So it's written that Radharani gave Vidyavali a hug for over one hour. And during that hug, the Acharyas say, Radharani was praying in the following way. Oh, how wonderful it is that this very person, who my husband and mother-in-law will do anything to stop me from meeting, by their order, I am now embracing to my heart's content. Let's, let's say that again. How wonderful it is, Radha said, that this very person, who my husband and mother-in-law will do anything to stop me from meeting. By their order, I am now embracing to my heart's content. Shiva Dham Ki, Shiva Bhumi, Shiva Dham Dham Ki, 
Shishi Radha Shama Sundar Ki, Vrindavaneshwari, Shimatri Radha Rani Ki. Wow. So much nectar. Uh, so, as we've seen um, over the past two weeks while discussing Yavat, um, the, the mood of um, Vipralamba Bhav, or the, the mood of separation, is most prominent there. Of course, Radha and Krishna are meeting, but most of the time they're in separation, but they are meeting. And again, because of the separation, the meetings are very sweet. They're very sweet. Um, I read a quote the other day that um, I, I feel, uh, you could say, summarizes um, all our classes in, uh, in Yavat and the theme of Yavat. It's a, it's a short quote, but it strikes you. Separation is not the end of love, but it creates love. We're always saying, you know, separation makes the heart grow fonder. So this is another way of saying it, a new quote. Separation is not the end of love, rather it creates love. So the mood of separation in Krishna's Vrindavan pastimes is, um, how could you say, it's not something we should be afraid of. We're going to live in separation from Krishna. No, it's not something we should be afraid of. Actually, it's something we should hanker for even as aspiring devotees. I always say we know who we are and we know where we're going. In, in the BBT uh, publication, um, the book Elevation to Krishna, Chapter 5, Prabhupada writes, and I quote, those who follow the teachings of Lord Chaitanya should experience and relish the feelings of separation, not of meeting. This is a book we distribute to the public. Those who follow in the teachings of Lord Chaitanya should experience and relish the feelings of separation, not of meeting. Krishna describes such suffering, <laughs> you know, when we can see how the residents of Vrindavan suffer when Krishna's away. But Krishna describes uh, such suffering and separation in the Brihat Bhagavatamritam by Srila Sanatana Goswami when he says to Narada Muni, Krishna speaking to Narada Muni about separation. Um, he says, This anguish of separation is praised as greater than the happiness of enjoying with those one loves. Separation is so pleasing to the mind that it cannot be described. It always transforms at last into an abundance of pleasure. Only experts in tasting these moods can understand how this happens. But know for certain that someday, by the grace of Sri Prabhupada, his mercy is all that we are made of, by the grace of Sri Prabhupada, we will taste that separation. We just have to follow all, his, all of his instructions faithfully and serve his mission to the best of our ability. These are the two departments in our life. Our shadana, our spiritual practices, and then our sharing good fortune with others. Because this was the mood of Sridhar Prabhupada on this planet. This was what he was teaching us, to share our good fortune with others. And then by his grace, these deeper things will be realized. One of my favorite verses from Brihat Bhagavatam Nitam, Part 2, Chapter 1, Text 6. This is the verse which really gives me hope that I can make it. Panam gopyam apishnigde shishe vhatsham miti shurti tach churyatam ha bhaga goloka mahi mahaduna. The Vedas say that to a loyal disciple, excuse me, the Vedas say that to a loyal disciple, one may speak the confidential secret. Therefore, O most fortunate one, now please hear the glories of Goloka. Hare Krishna. The Vedas say that to a loyal disciple, one may speak the confidential secret. Therefore, O most fortunate one, now please hear the glories of Goloka. 
Shira Prabhupada Ki. May we always remain loyal to your instructions and to your mission. But although we uh, stress the importance of separation um, from Krishna in our Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, it doesn't mean we should minimize the importance of meeting with Krishna. Yesterday I was very fortunate I visited the, um, one of our biggest temples in uh, New Delhi by um, the hard work and the dedication of um, Srila Gopal Krishna Maharaj. Um, so many temples are sprouting up around Delhi. I don't know how he does it. Well, I know how he does it. <laughs> He's a Prabhupada man. So I went to, I don't even know all the names of the temples, there's so many, but I went to the, to the main one. And um, I gave a lecture about, um, well, it, the verse was from Chaitanya Charitamrita, and it was about the intense feelings of um, separation that Lord Chaitanya was experiencing from Krishna. And the verse, Prabhupada was quoting Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, all the different symptoms of ecstasy. Uh, Dina Bandhu Prabhu was there also, and he, he told me later, he said, well, when I heard that verse, and the purport, he said, he said I, I don't know what I would have said. <laughs> of course, we know he's so expert preacher, but um, it was a verse all about separation, you know, the intricacies of separation. I tried my best. But um, I spoke <clears throat> primarily about the four kinds of separation from Krishna. The four kinds of separation from Krishna. These things we can discuss in Srimad Bhagavatam class. Prabhupada said, Bhagavad Gita class, we have in the evening and we invite the public. And also it's very beneficial for us. But um, we can go a little deeper in the Srimad Bhagavatam class in the morning. So I was giving a, a morning class, actually, in Delhi. So I spoke about the four kinds of separation. Purvarag, Mana, Pravasa, and Prema Vaichitya. So I won't go into deal, detail about that because I think I've given a few classes about um, um, the intricacies of, of separation from Krishna. So I thought to today to continue on because we finished all the Yava pastimes. Um, we can discuss uh, rather um, about separation. Why don't we discuss about meeting? Because meeting is also important. <laughs> Sometimes devotees say, "No, oh, well." I'm just trying to reconnect with Krishna. <laughs> After so many lifetimes of forgetfulness, why would I want to be separated from him when I get back to Goloka? But anyway, we've discussed that point. But meeting is there. The, the meetings are relishable because of the separation. So they're also an integral part of our philosophy. So I studied a little bit up on the subject matter with the help of my friends and scholars. And as there are four kinds of separation, there's four kinds of meetings as well. Now, separation is called vipralamba, and meeting is called sambhoga. Now, in Sri Rupa Goswami's Ujvalani Lamani, chapters 15 and 16, he describes four ways of meeting, which interestingly enough, he says, take place in the waking state and in the dreaming state, you can meet Krishna, you know, in 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 in, wa in waking state, and also you can meet Krishna in the dreaming state. I thought that was really interesting. And these four ways of meeting with Krishna are also mentioned in Prabhupada's purport to Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila twenty three sixty two. So it, it's there are twice, as, as far as I've found, that the details are given twice in our scriptures. So um, they are as follows, meeting, meeting, four kinds of meeting. So the first is called samsipa samboga. Again, samboga means meeting. So samsipa samboga. It's described as, quote, a brief meeting that is enjoyed by meeting as children, meeting in the pasture lands, Meeting at the time of milking cows with Krishna, remember. Meeting Krishna suddenly and unexpectedly. Meeting by grasping the hand 
Ooh, Krishna grabs her hand. Meeting by tugging on the clothes. Meeting by blocking the path. Meeting by enjoyment of a hug. So that's the first uh, kind of meeting with Krishna. Some sipa, some boga. Now the second way that the devotee may meet Krishna is called Sankirna Sambhog. Sankirna Sambhog. And that's described as a meeting following an exchange that is enjoyed by meeting during the Rasa Leela dance, meeting during water sports, meeting with Krishna during pastimes in the forest groves, um, meeting while disputing over paying the tax toll, meeting during stealing of the flute, meeting during the enjoyment of boating, meeting while drinking uh, intoxicating honey wine, and meeting while worshiping the sun god. Hare Krishna. Deep and so many wonderful details. <laughs> Why? What need is it to read the common news? For the last year and a half, it's just been total anxiety. And this is a total nectar. So the, ter the third type of meeting with Krishna is called Sampana Sambo. Sampana Sambo. It's a type of meeting that follows the separation caused by a short journey and enjoyed by viewing each other from a long distance, meeting during the swing festival, meeting while throwing colors, meeting to play riddles with each other, meeting to gamble with dice, meeting while engaged in dancing, meeting while lounging about, meeting during pastimes of feigned sleep. Hare Krishna. And finally, the fourth type of meeting is called Samrid Dhimana Samboga. Samrid Dhimana Samboga. It's described as a fully enriched um, type of meeting that follows a very long journey. It's really interesting. A fully enriched type of meeting that follows a very long journey and is enjoyed by meeting in dreams, meeting at Kurukshetra, the blossoming of ecstatic emotions, meeting in Vrindavan after returning from Dwarka, meeting while engaged in various pastimes, but with the role of a lover and beloved reversed, meeting while eating, meeting while resting together, and meeting while the lover assumes the domineering mood. Hare Krishna. Now the Acharyas say that um, every meeting, I really like this part, every meeting of Radha and Krishna is as fresh and as and exciting as the very first time they met. We've heard that before. Prabhupada would often say Krishna consciousness is ever fresh. And we've discussed how, although these are, you could say, simple pastimes, the simplicity of the rural atmosphere of Vrindavan, and they happen again and again in different parts of Vrindavan in a variety of, of ways, day after day. By the potency of this, the yoga maya, um, Purnamasi, the pastime potency of the Lord, they're ever fresh. It's as if the uh, Krishna and the devotees are doing them for the first time. This is the mystical nature of Vrindavan. Here life gets boring. You do the same thing. Eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. That's probably a summary of material activities. And there are various varieties, but it's very boring. So Krishna consciousness is ever fresh. So every meeting, we're talking about meetings, every meeting of Radha and Krishna is as fresh and as, and as exciting as the very first time they met. So my mind was like, oh, the first time they met? Where's that? And I looked and actually the very first time Radha and Krishna met was at a place called Sanket. Sanket. Very popular for Gaudiya Vaishnavas to go to Sanket. 
Of course, we know the Leela when Radha was a baby, her eyes were closed, and um, Krishna came as a baby, and his parents brought him, and then when he looked at Radha, she opened her eyes. But that's infancy. The very first time that Radha and Krishna actually met in their uh, pastime, the loving exchanges, was at Sanket. And uh, Kavi Karnapurna writes about that meeting in his illustrious Ananda Vrindavan Champu. And that meeting was very special, very special meeting, we can imagine. Because even in his later pastimes, when Krishna was in Dwarka, being served by thousands of queens, I was reading, whenever he would recall the sweetness of his first meeting with Vrindavaneshwari, Shimati Radharani, the sorrow of separation would overwhelm him. So it's described that that, um, that first meeting uh, between Radha and Krishna took place in the rainy season when the weather made it difficult for the residents of Vrindavan to move about. But it made it easier for Radha and Krishna to travel to an unnoticed uh, meeting place. And that meeting, of course, was arranged by Purnamasi and Vrindadevi. Of course, they waited a number of years until both Radha and Krishna had grown out of childhood. Until that time, they you know, had, had never met. Not out of childhood in the sense that, I mean, you know, the pastimes go to when Krishna's around, what, 14 or something. So um, the meeting pastime took not in infancy or baby childhood, but a little bit older, eight or nine, ten like that. Uh, and um, because they could never meet when they were children uh, or even when they were young, uh, on the verge of maturity, because... Uh, well, Vedic culture is very strict, and young boys and young girls don't mix. Of course, we read how you know, Krishna would leave, leave Nandagram with the cows in the very beginning, and he'd pass by the gopis somewhere on the way out to the forest, and um, they would see each other from a distance. And they, I was reading how they knew very much about each other. Krishna knew the gopis, and the gopis knew Krishna, because they'd heard about each other's character and nature. And of course, ultimately, their love is eternal. So in the, in the early stage of her youth, I was reading, Radha and Krishna's attachment, or rather Radha Rani's attachment to Krishna would often keep her awake. She hadn't met him yet. They hadn't met. But the attachment that grew from seeing him from a, seeing him from a distance and hearing about his glories from the older gopis of the cowherd men. Everyone was always glorifying Krishna and Braj. So Radharani would hear these things. She would see him, and her attachment would grow, and she'd hear about him. So when she was very young, that attachment to Krishna would often keep her awake all night. So it's described on the night of their first meeting, she was thinking, finally, I will get to see Krishna. Finally, I will get to serve Krishna. So, of course, their first meeting at Sankhet was in the mood of Padakya Rasa, unwedded love. So it was a secret meeting at night. And so for it, in order for it to happen, when Radharani left her home, she had to proceed through the night undetected. We discussed some of these details last year. To meet Krishna at nighttime in the forest, she has to be, no one has to see her. So for that first meeting in Sankhet, her friends smeared her body with black musk, dressed her in a blue sari, and led her out into the dark of night, where it's described so beautifully. Radharani, this is her first meeting, she boldly entered the forest. She wasn't afraid. She boldly enters the, entered the forest. And one great devotee, Govinda Das Thakur, he prays about this particular starting of this pastime at Sankhet. Oh, Sri Radha, your glistening necklace, bracelets, and dress are black, and the lotus flowers, buzzing bees, and all-encompassing night are blacker still. 
In this way, you remained hidden. Other acharyas comment that in this, on the way to the first meeting, Radharani could barely see her way in the dark, but her natural love and affection for Krishna acted like an internal compass, acted like an internal compass, and guided her to the meeting place with Krishna. This is the proper use of any language. <laughs> this is real poetry. And at one point along the way, she noticed a, a dark tamal tree, which she mistook to be Krishna, with his arms outstretched. So then she uh, began softly addressing the tree as Krishna. And her gopi friends who were accompanying her had to tell her it wasn't actually her beloved. <laughs> so now as, she's, um, as she was traveling through the forest, Krishna was the first one to arrive at the first meeting place, Shankat. And uh, it's so beautiful. While waiting for Shirada, what was he doing? Kirtan. He was chanting her holy names. We chant Krishna's holy names, but we're also blessed to chant Radha's names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The word Hare is invoking the mercy of Srimati Radharani. She is non different from Hare, as Krishna is non different from Krishna, his, his holy name. So we're actually addressing the divine couple when we chant Hare Krishna. So there's Krishna waiting at Sankhet for Radha, simply chanting her holy names. Now, as soon as she, Radha, arrived at this first meeting, a flash of lightning suddenly lit up the area. For what purpose? Everything has a purpose in Vrindavan. To reveal her transcendental beauty to Krishna, who was waiting for her there. So as she entered this kunj, Shankat, along with her friends, the acharyas write, quote, the goddess of bashfulness, Lajadevi, temporarily stunned both Radha and Krishna in the moment that they had been preparing for their entire lives. They were like stunned. <laughs> so at one point, Lalita had to push Radha forward to meet Krishna. This is the meeting of all meetings. <laughs> but then the goddess of resistance, Manadevi, caused Radharani to turn around and run away. And seeing that, you know, after so long, waiting to see her, Krishna fainted. So then Radharani's girlfriends, they ran after her and they brought her back and Krishna was able to revive himself. Then one of um, Radharani's friends whispered in Sri Radha's ear. And these type of things are what we should be Smart and we should train ourselves. You know, we're not at spontaneous devotees yet, but suddenly we can train ourselves to remember these verses and these statements by the Lord, by Sri Matyavadarani, by her associates, of course by our acharyas. So one of the friends of Radha whispered in her ear, it's so nice. Listen, friend, today we request a favor of you. Just go forward and meet Krishna, and we will never again ask anything from you. Listen, friend, today, today we request a favor of you. Just go forward and meet Krishna, and we will never again ask anything from you. And another gopi said, O, main, o, o, o moon faced one, Radha, O moon faced one, just look at this poor boy. He came alone through this dangerous jungle only for you. Be compassionate to him. Relieve him of his distress and his anxiety. So you can hear the drum roll, the bugle sounding. So finally, Radharani inched forward and met with Krishna, Sambhog, for the very first time. And what did they do? The Acharyas write, they shared the stories of their lives. 
they shared the stories of their lives, as well as enjoying loving glances and laughter. So after some time, um, all the gopis left, leaving Radha and Krishna alone. First meeting, Shankar. We'll go there on that. We're always describing it as the grand parikrama. <laughs> When, 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 when will that day be ours? We can all be together again, roaring kirtan, and you know, go to Sanket and retell the pastime again. It's ever fresh. So as Radha and Krishna grew older, they would um, meet more often. I think, oh, again, they were mostly in separation, but they would meet more often. And sometimes, it was kind of nice to read, they met without obstacles. That's like some special nectar, right? Because, you know, we, we ourselves are looking forward to hearing about their meeting. So, but sometimes there was no obstacle. This is the variety of Vrindavan. Everything's covered. And how do we know that? Because I read a verse the other day in, in Sri Rupa Goswami's Padyavali, verse 206 which shows how sometimes there were no obstacles. And here's the verse. Madhya Soda said to Krishna, My child, I invited Radha to a celebration at night. Her husband wasn't at home. She left her empty home and came here. The other servants are busy, are busy and not listening to me. How can a chaf chaste wife travel uh, about all alone. How can she return to her, ho her home unaccompanied? For this reason, my child, I want you to escort her home. Hare Krishna. And then Rupa Goswami goes on to say, when Radha and Madhava heard Mother Yasoda's words, they glanced at each other, all glorious to the sweetly smiling, gentle glances. Let's do it one more time. Mother Yasoda said to Krishna, my child, I invited Radha to a celebration at night. Her husband wasn't at home. She left her empty house and came here. The other servants are busy, are busy and not listening to me. But how can a chaste wife travel about all alone? How can she return to her home unaccompanied? For this reason, my child, I want you to escort her home. No obstacles here. And then Rupa Goswami writes, when Radha and Madhava heard Mother Yasoda's words, they glanced at each other. All glorious to their sweetly smiling, gentle glances, Rupa Goswami concludes. All glorious to his personal verse book, Padyavali, which he left behind for all of us. So again, uh, these are very deep subject matters. Very deep. And there's always a word of caution. We should always remember where we are at on the path of devotional service. So Rupa Goswami cautions us. He shares these things with us, but there's always a word of caution. That word of caution I found in Padyavali, uh, verse 312. Vrindavane mukandhasya nityalila virajate spashtam esha rahas yet vaj janad bhir api nochate. He writes, In Vrindavan, Mukunda's eternal pastimes of union are going on forever. Due to such pastimes being very esoteric in nature, even the learned souls, such as Shukadev, do not speak about them. There's a warning. But of course, you know, we have Krishna book. <laughs> Krishna book is... Um, Chirra Prabhupada's summary of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, where these pastimes are, many of these pastimes are, are, are there. And of course, we have Srila Prabhupada's purports to properly understand them. So he's given us everything. And we can take it bite by bite and digest it properly. And by his grace and the writings of the previous acharyas, we can relish these sweet Vrindavan pastimes. Sugar sweet, you can never taste it as something different, but if you're a connoisseur of sweets, maybe you can appreciate it more. But, you know, we I remember we distributed a Krishna book door to door in the ghettos of Detroit. 
So ultimately, this knowledge is to be distributed. And unless we hear these um, nectarian brajalilas, we risk remaining foolishly attached to the temporary unfavorable things of this world. We need a strong antidote to the poison of our attachment to everything material. We need an antidote. So that lower taste, you know, that we have, it, what does it lead us to? <clears throat> it leads us to the repetition of birth and death in this world. So harikata is the remedy. That lower taste is something we want to get rid of. Srila Prabhupada Saraswati says in his Viveka Shatakam, one of my favorite books now, Viveka Shatakam, 100 Verses of Wisdom. It's text 87. He, he, he tells us what happens to those who, you know, who, who, who have um, strong material desires in the heart. He actually refers to some of the big ones. He, he writes, Where is Nahusha now? Where is Hiranyakashipu? Where is Ravana? Where is Vena? Where is Bhomasura? Where is Kala Yavana? Where is Kartavir Arjuna? After climbing the mountain of pride, people are certainly seen falling down from it. Therefore, I have taken shelter of you, O Lord. Please protect me from the cycle of birth and death within this world of matter. Please protect me. So yes, this Krishna Kata, it's the, it's the remedy of, for all suffering. So we should drink deep, just like you're in the desert and you're, you're dying of thirst. You, know, you drink deep the water. So we're dying literally again and again and again and again in this world. So to drink deep these um, Krishna's pastimes in Braj, or any of his pastimes. We, we love anything Krishna. We love to hear him on the, his, ex, his, his pastimes on the battle of Kurukshetra and in Mathur and Dwarka. He's our beloved Lord, so anything he does, we, we relish to hear him. But especially Vrindavan pastimes. <laughs> We're a little biased because we spent a lot of time in Braj because of the Corona Sura. The coronavirus forced me, some of my illustrious god brothers and god sisters, we were um, trapped in Vrindavan. So we have to um, we have to we have to imbibe Vrindavan in our hearts. And Prabodhananda Saraswati uh, reminds us again in his Viveka Shatakam, text fifty seven. He writes, "O Lord of Braj Krishna, giving up your lotus feet." and worshiping, worshiping someone else? How can such a fool cross the ocean of material existence riding on a rock? He writes like that, riding on a rock. Having observed that sensual pleasures last for the mere twinkling of an eye, all pure saintly persons have made their residence in the fresh bowers of Shiva Narendam. Hare Krishna. So I'd like to finish today with a Sambhog verse. We often finish with the Vipralamba verses, but now we understand how relevant is the meeting. Sanket and wherever else Radha Krishna met. So let's finish today's class with a meeting verse. A beautiful verse describing Radha and Krishna together. And actually, this is a really special verse, dear devotees. This is the first invocation verse of Srila Jayadev Goswami's Gita Govinda. And I'll just leave with this verse. He writes, O Radha, threatening clouds devour the sky. Blackish tamal trees cast the forest into darkness. Damodar is naturally timid and cannot be alone at night, so take him home with you. 
bewildered by intense joy as she turned toward the bower of desire trees beside the forest path, Sri Radha honored her friend's words. When she reached the bank of the Jamuna, she sported in loving pastimes with Krishna. Triumph to Radha Madhava's beautiful pastimes. Triumph to Radha Madhava's beautiful pastimes. May their sweetness come alive in the hearts of all devotees. Thank you, um, everyone. I have nothing more to say. I just love to end with those quotes of um, these great acharyas who we pray will shower their mercy on us so we can understand these things and we can share these confidential secrets with others, confident that by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Yuga Dharma of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. One day everyone can go back home, back to Godhead. Jai Shri Prabhupada. Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar Ki, Vrindavan Ishwari Shimati Radharani Ki, Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Shri Maya Purdam Ki, Gokprindan Harinam Sen Kirtan Yamya Ki, the chanting of Hare Krishna Ki, the distribution of the holy names in every town and village in the world. Ki. Back home, back to God. J J C C Rod Hey Shine Glorious Bob